Hey, everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Back by popular demand is the mother-daughter duo from Vegan News Daily. If you watched our Thanksgiving cook-along, which was one of our highest watch shows where we had people actually cooking along with us, which we're going to do again on Christmas Day, by the way. So make sure you're on my mailing list because we actually send out the ingredient list and the shopping list in advance so you can actually cook with us. Then you will recognize the people that are on today. And the mother is named Elspeth Feldman. The daughter is named Kaylee Feldman. They are from Vegan News Daily. They're extraordinarily knowledgeable in the area of plant-based cooking. Their recipes are delicious, nutritious, and amazingly beautiful presentation. I think they have cornered the market on that. They're going to be making some wonderful holiday recipes for you, including a whole roasted cauliflower with a tahini dressing, as well as being so kind, making two recipes from my new book. So please welcome back Elspeth and Kaylee from Vegan News Daily. That rhymes. Great to have you back, guys. Thank you, Chef AJ. It's wonderful to be back here with your community, and I can't wait to show you these wonderful recipes. I'll let Kaylee introduce herself. It's so good to be here with you all, and thank you so much, Chef AJ. It's always fun to be back. It's been a few, a few, a few months since I've been back on, so it's wonderful to be here and such a fun time of year, especially to share these recipes. You are all going to want this cauliflower on your Christmas or holiday feast table. Super. So I'm going to get going. And on the first recipe, I have um, three wonderful recipes that will make your holiday table look wonderful um, or just any night of the week. But first one I'm going to do is a whole roasted cauliflower with tahini dressing. So um, the cauliflowers that I choose, I just, I brought this out because I happened to be at my farmer's market this morning and this came in my CSA box. This is a beautiful purple headed head of cauliflower. Um, typically we get the, you know, white cauliflower. It also comes in bright yellow. Um, and what I choose is sort of about a two and a half pound head of cauliflower. This is a little bit smaller. Um, and I make a sort of a sauce to coat the cauliflower before I start roasting it. So I'm gonna get going on that. I like to use my little container. I'm lucky enough to have a Vitamix that has all the different size containers. So I'm gonna go ahead and get going on the sauce. So I do um, tahini um, on, the, on the sauce, so about a tablespoon or so of tahini that's going in. And then I um, could use miso to flavor this, but um, because we all like to be really, really salt, low salt, salt free. I'm going to just leave that out and use a salt free seasoning. I use um, like Chef AJ, Benson's Table Tasty. And I know most of you love Benson's Table Tasty too. So I've got um, salt free seasoning. I've also got some cumin and I've got some smoked paprika. So I'll throw that into my blender. Um, and I'm going to use a date for sweetness. So just a medjool date that I've popped the seed out of. I'm just going to try and scrape off as much of the tahini. Tahini is kind of sticky. Kaylee's going to tell you more about the, um, the properties of you know, sesame seeds and why we love sesame seeds and don't shy away from them. So I'll leave that for her. And I've also got some lemon juice going in and um, a little bit of apple cider vinegar. So this will be my liquid. And if any of you are looking for a fun stocking stuffer for the holidays, I highly suggest a little citrus press like this for any of your friends who like to cook. It's such an easy um, holiday gift that pleases everybody. And I use this little squeezer all the time for so many recipes. So it's about, you know, 10, 12 bucks. So I think it's a good one. And I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of apple cider vinegar in here. And then I'm gonna whirl this up and get this blended. I'm just making a little paste to go on the outside of the cauliflower. So a little bit of blender noise coming in here. Typically, typically blend this a little bit longer, but I think that should be good enough for today. So I'm gonna to coat the outside of this head of cauliflower 
using gloves because that way I can get into all the little nooks and crannies. Um, so what I do with the cauliflower first is that I might I slice a little fresh um, bit of the stalk off and some of the outside leaves that maybe don't look as fresh. But, you know, you can definitely leave all of these greens on. It's, you know, very edible and actually quite delicious. So I'm gonna open up my sauce here and it's very pasty. So I'm gonna just scoop this all out and smear it all over the top of this cauliflower. And this is gonna just sort of roast up and form a nice little crust on the outside here. Just gonna use my hands. So this will, and I'll rub it in a little bit and it'll give the cauliflower a lot of flavor. Cause as we know, cauliflower is very, you know, it's got a very subtle flavor. So it can definitely use a little bit of dressing up. And by using gloves, I don't have to run over to the sink and wash my hands. So that was my other strategy. There you go. So I put about three quarters of a cup or a cup or so of water into the base of this glass container. You could do it in a pot. I have it on a steamer rack. This is just the steamer rack in here from my um, instant pot. So the cauliflower is not sitting in the water. It's just up on a little rack. So I'm going to pop this into the oven. I'll set my timer for an hour. Oh no, not an hour. I, about 55 minutes is what I um, first check on it. So different times, you know, for different sizes of cauliflower. Um, about a two and a half pound cauliflower. I check on it about 55 minutes and then maybe I'll, I'll you know, give it another five minutes if need be. And the way I check on it is by using a skewer. So um, just a, a skewer that I can stick right into the, the cauliflower. So that's it for the cauliflower going in the oven. And then when it comes out of the oven, we're going to want a nice um, dressing on top. So I'm gonna just change the set a little bit here. Maybe I'll send you back to Kelly for a minute and then we'll come back and do the tahini dressing. Is that okay, Kelly? Of course. All right. Well, I'm going to share with you guys a little bit about us. Oh, Chef AJ, do you mind allowing me to screen share so I can share the PowerPoint? Of course. Sorry about that. There you go. Okay. Awesome. So my mom and I have been working together to teach um, vegan cooking classes. Actually, we've been doing this the past few years in person, but in May, when quarantine and everything started all around the world, we actually started doing this online. And so um, we have been working together as a family to create an online vegan publication called Vegan News Daily. And our mission really is to inspire people to consume and cook and prepare food that is good for you, good for your body, and also good for the planet. And so that's our really simple mission. And also I wanted to introduce you all to Prince, our rescue German Shepherd, because he's oftentimes walking around my mom and dad's kitchen and he has just been such a joy in our lives. My family actually got him in February. And so he's been wonderful to have throughout this entire year of 2020. And um, I hope there's a good Prince sighting today. So my family is vegan. We all went vegan about nine years ago. So my parents are in the middle. There's me and my brother on the left side of my mom. And then my husband on the right and my brother's girlfriend, Anna Maria on the left. And so we all, my entire core family went vegan around nine years ago and it was inspired by my brother, Kyle. And he actually decided when he was 15 to stop eating all meat. And we were very concerned. Um, we thought it was just a phase. And then a year later, we prepared him a chicken and we were like, okay, it's been a year, time for you to eat some chicken again. And he refused. And so then my mom started to actually look into um, why he's be why he was being vegetarian, what are some of the reasons behind it. And she realized, wow, this makes a lot of sense. And we might as well go vegan, we might as well go the full way. And so that was very inspiring to us. And then um, slowly um, throughout the next you know, few months, we all basically adapted to a vegan diet. And so this fall is our nine month vegan anniversary all as a family. Um, so over the, about three years ago, my mom created a cookbook of Thanksgiving recipes called Pardon My Turkey. And here you can see our family having a big plant-based um, Thanksgiving uh, feast. 
So my husband and I, I, I'm a certified yoga instructor, a raw food chef, and my husband, um, Brian and I have traveled around the world hosting different yoga and sound healing um, and uh, raw food and vegan retreats. And so this is us in Peru and in Costa Rica. We actually lived in Costa Rica for a year. Um, and that's where we led a lot of our retreats as well. And in addition to a lot of raw food retreats, because I'm a raw foodie, I love eating. Um, uh, whole food plant-based, raw food based as well. So as I mentioned, my mom and I have hosted over 29 online vegan cooking classes since May, and it has been such a blast to connect with hundreds of people from all around the world. Um, and here are some of the highlights of our series. Um, we've had vegan flans and chocolate souffles and brownies and nice creams and cauliflower wings and vegan hot dogs. And all of this is whole food plant-based, SOS free vegan quiches, um, tacos, Costa Rican breakfast platter, granola, so many amazing recipes, falafel, baba ganoush, of course, all of it's oil-free, and those recipes typically aren't. We also have crepes recipes, French, Indian, Thai as well. And we, most importantly, we've actually been able to donate over $3,500 to food banks. Um, these food banks are Community Solidarity in Long Island, New York, and also Center of Health in Annapolis. And Community Solidarity is actually fully plant-based food bank. So if you do want to donate somewhere during this giving season, that's a really wonderful cause. And then Center of Health in Annapolis, Maryland, that's my hometown. And this food bank primarily serves immigrant communities, which is very important. We've also been able to donate to animal sanctuaries. And the one that we donated to is called Poplar Springs in Poolsville, Maryland. And they are a wonderful animal sanctuary that is all donation based. And they have hundreds of animals there that all have different names and stories. So it's a really wonderful place. Um, we're also incredibly proud of the delicious creations that our vegan news daily dinner club members uh, make and we have these really fun facebook groups for every series that we host so people can post photos of their recipes and inspire one another and we also post bonus recipes every week in those groups in addition to our weekly cooking classes um, so we've gotten really wonderful feedback from our group and um, it really has become a very tight-knit community of people supporting one another and that really means a lot to all of us especially during this year where it has been somewhat isolating so if you want more delicious recipes from us we actually have a youtube channel called vegan news daily and you can find us and you can see our most recent youtube videos you can also email us to get the recipes that we post on there we've got most recently a chickpea breadcrumb video a perfect pumpkin cinnamon ice cream and these are some fun videos and today we just posted a new video that my mom will tell you about <coughs> So today you're going to learn how to make two delicious recipes from Chef AJ's new cookbook, which is really exciting. And of course, this whole roasted cauliflower. We also have an exciting announcement. So I'm going to turn it back to my mom so she can tell us some more about what she is cooking. Okay, so we got that whole roasted cauliflower into the oven. Um, and that's going to be in there for, as I say, about the next 50, 55 minutes or so to an hour. Um, so now, now while that's roasting, I get going and I start making the tahini dressing and the garnishes that are going to go on it, make this the best of um, whole, whole roasted cauliflower. So um, I, again, I'm going to choose a small blender um, container because it is a small amount of dressing and I don't want it lost in the great big container. So for the dressing, I'm going to use some tahini again. Um, and I just wanted to say that, you know, when you get tahini, what I usually do is I open the lid and I pour off all that oil, um, but my husband complains about that. So instead I started just, you know, tilting the, the bottle, storing the bottle upside down so that the oil, you know, is better mixed in with the tahini so it's not so dry. So I'm gonna put some tahini in here. So about, about half a cup um, and you will be able to get the recipe. Kaylee will tell you exactly how to get this recipe. Um, so I'll pull that, put that into my container. Um, and then I'm going to use, I am going to use some coconut aminos in here. So again, you could use salt free seasoning. Um, coconut aminos does have um, a very, very low um, salt content. So I'll just pop that in there. I could use a date, um, but for this one, I'm just going to use a little date syrup. You could use um, maple syrup as well, but uh, date syrup is my preferred sweetener because it's, you know, a whole, more of a whole food. So just a little bit of that for some sweetness. Um, I use a little bit of warm water. And again, I'm gonna add some lemon juice, sorry, and some garlic. So I've got a couple of cloves of garlic, three cloves of garlic, and I don't need to mince it or anything because it's going to be blended up in the sauce. So I'm gonna squeeze in some lemon juice in here. 
I'm using Meyer lemons today, which are absolutely beautiful. They so, so much more fragrant and they have a sort of a sweetness to them. So pop that in there and I'm going to make some blender noise again. How about that? I do have one other ingredient for the sauce, which is dill. And I actually wrote a little note here because so often I just throw the dill in and then the sauce turns green. So I usually chop up the dill and I put a note there that says, wait till it's blended. That way you just get the little green flecks in the dressing and you don't get a whole green sauce from the dill. So blender noise coming up. <laughs> So that looks and sounds like it's nice and smooth. Um, so I did go ahead and roast a head of cauliflower in advance so that I can show you how I present this. So I'm gonna grab that from the oven. So this cauliflower has um, been roasted. It's got the tahini uh, sauce all around it. Not the tahini dressing that we're going to put on top, but this is the you know, sort of the crust, the paste that we made in advance. So that's there. And then I'm going to um, just cool down a bit. I'm going to carefully lift it onto my platter. Actually, I don't need to lift the, I'm just going to lift the cauliflower onto the platter. So again, this is just the rack that I used from the um, instant pot. That's how I roasted it. So I'll pop that away. So I like to do this dish on a black platter. You can definitely use it on a white platter. Um, I have an Instagram page, the Vegan, Vegan News Daily Instagram or the Speedy Vegan, which is my personal page. And it shows you this whole roast cauliflower on a white platter and on a black platter. So you can choose, you know, which color you want to do it on. But it looks, you know, sort of eye popping. So I start with that. And then I have my lovely dressing here that when it whips up, it's a nice light color. So at this stage, I wanna stir in my dill. So this is just some fresh dill. I absolutely love dill and I put it on everything. So I'm gonna just stir that in here. Um, and maybe I put a little bit too much water in here. This is a little bit um, thinner than I usually like it, but I usually pour it over the top and let it drizzle down a little. Yeah, so I would probably make it a little bit thicker next time. Um, maybe more of the consistency of like yogurt. Um, and then I would use a little bit extra on the side for serving. So I always have a little bit extra out there. Um, and then I take fresh parsley. I always find any opportunity to use fresh herbs. So I've got some parsley here. This is the Italian flat leaf parsley. So I'll sprinkle some of that over the top and a little bit on the platter as well because why not dress up the whole platter? Um, and then I have some pomegranate seeds. And the new video that just went up on the Vegan News Daily YouTube channel today is how I de-seed a pomegranate. Super easy to do, but pomegranates are wonderful and I, I can't get enough of them. They, I get these beautiful big pomegranates and I probably go through about six or seven a week. So they're happening on everything. As soon as you know November rolls around, it's uh, open season for pomegranates on everything in my book. So I just sprinkle some pomegranates over the top and all over the kitchen. <laughs> and then um, radishes is what I like to do as well. So I just take a bunch of different color radishes and I quarter them or I slice them and I'll just sprinkle them around and over the top of this whole dish. The, this is sort of a nice sort of Christmassy looking cauliflower because the radishes are such brilliant colors. They look like sort of Christmas decorations and baubles. So you could, these are some of the smaller radishes as well. So I could use the whole small ones and just dot those around too. So these are beautiful. So a couple of sprigs of fresh dill just to dress this all up. Um, you can do it however you like, but I do ask that if you do make this dish, definitely tag us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to see how it turns out. 
but this is how um, the whole, the festive whole roasted cauliflower. I'm gonna ask my husband, Paul, to come in a little bit closer. It looks so you can see how this is gonna be a beautiful centerpiece for any holiday table. Oh my God, that's so gorgeous. Could you text me a photo so we can make a thumbnail out of this? I sure will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's it for the whole roasted cauliflower. I'm gonna clear up the set here and we'll move on with some fabulous recipes from Chef AJ's new book, Own Your Health. Sounds good, mom. That looks amazing. All right, so I want to share with you guys a few things about cauliflower. So, of course, instead, normally you would see a whole roasted chicken if you weren't a vegan household. But instead, of course, you can just use a whole roasted cauliflower. So there's completely an easy way to do this without animal products. That's so much better for your health and full of flavor. And as we know, where does flavor come from? It comes from plants. And that is what people rub on chicken and animals and all of that. We can avoid that by using plants as the centerpiece. And so I like this meme, if cauliflower can become pizza, you my friend can do anything. As we all know, cauliflower has become quite the star of the vegan world, being used as pizza crust, being used in things like tacos and being used to actually make things like rice. There's a really fun video that my mom is obsessed with. Actually, I forget the name of the YouTube channel, but she can shout it out. Um, but it's this couple and they did um, a spoof of the song and it's called It's Not Rice. And it's like, they're just like throwing cauliflower rice all around. It's really, really funny and it will get stuck in your head. So just a warning. Um, so here are some different benefits of tahini. It's high in vitamin E. It's an excellent source of plant-based protein and healthy fats, high in antioxidants, and it also helps to lower blood cholesterol and lower blood pressure. And it's incredibly anti-inflammatory. So tahini comes from um, hold or unhold sesame seeds that are processed and made into a paste. And so the, the sesame seeds can either be raw or they can be roasted. Um, and you can even have black, uh, black sesame seeds to make um, a black tahini as well. So there's all different kinds that you can experiment with. I personally love the raw tahini just because it's unroasted and I um, appreciate um, all the qualities of the unroasted seed as well. But it's up to you to choose which you prefer. And so another star in this recipe, of course, is pomegranate. And so we actually have a new recipe video on our YouTube channel that is how to de a pomegranate. So you can go there to Vegan News Daily and you can watch how to de a pomegranate without splattering your Christmas outfit or your holiday clothes and without splattering your kitchen with basically what looks like blood. <laughs> Whenever you're making things with pomegranates or beets, be prepared to look like you have bloody fingers, but it's just pomegranates. So some benefits of pomegranates, they're actually revered by the Vedas, which were an ancient Hindu text for being one of the most uh, nutritious and best foods that you could possibly eat. And they're also just so beautiful. Whenever I cut into a pomegranate, it just looks like there's jewels. Um, so they're high in vitamin C, a great source of potassium, help to soothe the stomach, helps to boost memory and also wonderful in terms of anti-aging and it's high in iron as well. So as we know, people are always concerned about protein and iron when they go plant-based or go vegan. So um, simply incorporating more pomegranate this time of year, it's so abundant. So as my mom said, buy a bunch of pomegranates, they're beautiful and just like have them in a bowl on your kitchen counter. So I want to share with you a fun story about pomegranates and this story is going to take us over to India and um, the legend has it one day Buddha was taking alms for the poor and he was sitting and meditating and all of these rich men heard about heard news of this and decided to come forward and bring gifts for Buddha for the poor and so um, one rich man came and approached Buddha and gave him so much gold and Buddha accepted the offer with one hand and put it aside. Um, and then a king came and presented Buddha with the finest jewels that he had. And Buddha again put out one hand, accepted them and put the gift aside. And the rich men were getting a little bit like, why was he not more grateful? We gave him some pretty great things. So all, all of a sudden a very old woman, she doesn't look very healthy, came up to Buddha and she says to him, I'm so sorry, but all I have is half of a pomegranate because I ate the other half for lunch, but this is everything I have and I wanted to give it to you. So Buddha puts out both hands and accepts the pomegranate in both hands. And the rich men are so angry. They come up to him, they say, she just gave you half like a grimy pomegranate. Why are you accepting that with both hands? And we gave you these jewels and this money. And Buddha says to them, well, because she, you gave me maybe 10% of what you have. She, she gave me everything. 
Um, and so I think it's a really nice story to think about this time of year, especially when it comes to giving and giving back. Um, what can we give? Um, the more that we all can give and circulate what we have. And even if you're having a bad day, just think of all the things that you really do have in your life and all the blessings and um, what more can you do to share that? Um, so that's a fun story to leave you with. And now we're going to move on to learning how to make two delicious recipes from the wonderful chef AJ from her new book with Glenn Merzer, Own Your Health. And so I hope you guys all get this amazing book and I'm going to turn it back to my mama who is going to teach you how to make these recipes. Okay. So the first one that I'm going to make is called Baked Double Mashed Potato Strata. And Chef AJ, feel free to jump in anytime and tell me what I'm doing wrong because I want to do your recipe justice. <laughs> I'm sure if you did anything different, it would only improve it. <laughs> okay, so um, I have some uh, Yukon Gold potatoes that I cooked in the Instant Pot just you know, about 12 minutes um, that I'm mashing up here. Um, and to this, these potatoes, I'm going to add um, some nutritional yeast and what else do I have? You have some Benson's Table Tasty and some garlic powder. So this can only improve the flavor of the potatoes. Um, so I'm just gonna, I, I like to use a potato ricer typically when I mash the potato, um, this contraption, but um, today I'm just using a regular masher. I leave the potato skins on. Do you leave your potato skins on, Chef AJ? If they're Yukon Gold, I leave them on. If they're russet or other kind, I generally peel. But Yukon yeah. Gold, it's so paper thin, it just mashes so nicely. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to mash this all up. Um, and I highly recommend you get this book. Um, Own Your Health is very entertaining. I actually listen to it. I like to listen to a lot of books. Um, so I got the audio version, which I absolutely love. And um, Glenn is, has got a real sense of humor and he makes a lot of very important points um, that you know, really struck, struck gold for me. So definitely, definitely get this book, not just for the recipes, but um, for the message that, that Glenn puts over. So I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so that's the mashed potato part of the strata. Um, and, oh wait, and then I, I needed to add a little bit of, I think that, actually I will add some. This is just a little bit of um, unsweetened, um, actually this is homemade almond milk. If you wanna see how I make the almond milk, there is a video on our YouTube channel um, that shows you how I make almond milk. Very simple, very quick and easy. So that'll just make the potatoes just a little bit creamier. Sometimes with Yukons, you don't really need to add anything, but this one I think would benefit. I have been making this strata um, since I got the book and it has been like part of my every meal. This is part of my breakfast. I'm absolutely loving this. So I'll show you how it all comes together. All right, so that's the one part. The other part, I'm sorry to say, I am gonna deviate from the recipe because I couldn't find any Hannah yams and you all know how much Chef AJ loves her Hannah yams. So um, I just have to go with regular sweet potatoes. So no, I'm that, sorry. that's fine. But but that's what's great about these these. It, it doesn't matter. You know, I taught at my first Chibo class yesterday, and I used a specific kind of potato. But the thing about potatoes and sweet potatoes is they're basically interchangeable. I mean, it's whatever yeah. you like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, they do have. You know, I think you know many of us have become sweet potato aficionados, <laughs> like people become wine aficionados or chocolate aficionados, but um, you know, we all have our favorites, um, but I could not find any honey yams yesterday. So sweet potatoes it is, just regular sweet potatoes. And I probably have more than enough here because I, I have a whole nother tray ready cooked to show you. So, but I'm not complaining because I have potatoes at pretty much every meal. So this is a delicious dish. So these I just um, put on a baking sheet, roasted in the oven for about an hour because these guys are big guys um, and I, at about 400 degrees and I just roasted them and I'm just going to give them a mash and that's it. So this will be the other layer and then in between the layers and on top of the layers is going to be the best damn barbecue, barbecue sauce and I have to say this really is the best damn barbecue sauce. You won't ever be buying barbecue sauce again. I have a barbecue sauce recipe that I make but this one is so good that 
I'm not even going to bother making mine anymore. This is going to be the one that I make from now on. And I'll show you how I make it. It is going to involve some blender noise, but what we used to. Okay. So got my potatoes all set here. I'm going to grab this tray of all the goodies for the barbecue sauce and another Vitamix. And I'll show you how I blend this all together. Um, let me just grab the recipe so that I don't tell you the wrong things. Chef, do you, do you know your recipes by heart? Well, the ones I make all the time, I do like cauliflower bisque, but that's what's so great about writing books is I just look them up when I need to know. And I really, you know, I, I like my, do you like your recipes? Because people, you know, they're always chasing recipes, but I just love, I have like 400 now. I just, I just like to eat what I make. Yeah, I, I do love my recipes. And in fact, you know, I have, I've been writing so many recipes this, this summer. Last night I, I made our quinoa summer flatbread, which I think I made on your show a few months ago. And I was like, well, which recipe book was it in? You know, cause I've got to have all these courses and I was going through all my different classes trying to find my own recipe. Um, cause I've, and I just love having all my recipes written down. I always used to say that I never followed recipes. I just followed photographs. But now that I have written them down, I'm so grateful for it. Um, and my husband likes a lot of variety. So I find that I do make a lot of different things all the time. Um, but for me, you know, I'm mostly a potatoes and broccoli kind of girl. <laughs> That's what I have for lunch. That's what I'm having for lunch right after here uh, is a Hannah Yam and broccoli, my favorite. Yeah, yeah. And, and massive salads. I love my big salads. Um, so for the uh, best damn barbecue sauce, and Chef AJ, I don't, I don't curse at all. I don't know if you know that about me, but you know, damn is about as- Well, know. no, but damn's also, it's like we're a beaver, you know, it's a, it's, yeah. the, it's the, <laughs> sorry about that. The best darn barbecue sauce. The best, Gosh down barbecue sauce. Okay, all right. So here we go. So this is the. Is this the type that you use, Chef AJ? The fire roasted. I uh, love those. When Trader Joe's is out of it, I just go crazy because I use those for a, at least once a week when I have to teach late. We use that. Just we call it um, lockdown stir fry because it's so much easier to just use that than to you know saute the onion and the yeah. garlic and the peppers and and that that's delicious. Yeah. So this is the, the fire roasted makes all the difference. So if you can get fire roasted um, peppers and onions, grab, you know, if you, if you have your Trader Joe's, grab five bags. Nobody, I didn't say that to you, but yeah, grab five bags. And um, if you don't have it, you could just saute up some peppers and onions. So Absolutely. And, you know, even when they're out of it, Trader Joe's and really all stores sells a bag of frozen, you know, bell peppers in different colors. So you could even roast those in your air fryer or your oven if you wanted to. Yeah, that's true. Um, and then um, I'm going to pop in a bag of sun-dried tomatoes. So this is going in. And, um, oh wait, I do need my can opener. I tossed my can opener away. This is the Mere Glen, no salt added. Um, this is not the fire roasted diced tomatoes, but it is the no salt added diced tomatoes. I'm going to add this to my blender as well. And I don't know if you can see, but I have, as soon as I, start killing sweet potatoes. I don't know if you can see some little ears happening here. Prince comes over, he's looking for those sweet potato skins. <laughs> um, he loves sweet potatoes. Okay, um, so here are the peppers and onions. So I had defrosted them. They're going into the blender. So, so far we have sun-dried tomatoes, the roasted peppers and onions, and the um, mirror blend tomatoes. And then we're gonna add a whole lot of flavor here. So there's a number of different things that go in here. First up is the smoked hickory balsamic. This is from California Balsamics, wonderful vinegar. Um, you could use some of the Napa Valley Naturals um, balsamic vinegar and a little bit of the apple cider vinegar, but this hickory balsamic is just so much better. So I'm gonna add some of this. I know that's, um, you know, it was my fourth favorite, but I've been using it a lot lately. That is one of my favorite. And we have watching live the owner of California Balsamic, Thomas Allen. Oh, Thomas does such an incredible job. I think we all owe a debt of gratitude to him for his creations. So a um, number of different spices and flavorings here. So I've got some cumin, smoked paprika, um, garlic powder, onion powder, mustard powder, 
and um, some salt-free seasoning. So all sorts of beautiful colors and, oh, smells, smells great. Pop that in. And then I'm gonna blend this all up together and it makes the most, or the best damn barbecue sauce. <laughs> so here we go. Blend the noise. <laughs> That's it, it's as easy as that. So get this out of the way. So now I just need to assemble the strata. So you could do anything you want. I mean, you could do the, the yellow on the bottom and the Yukon gold on top or the opposite way. But basically you wanna get a nice layer of potatoes on the base. And then we're gonna do a layer of the barbecue sauce on top of this. And then layer on the sweet potatoes and then barbecue sauce on top of that and, and bake it. So that's the double mashed baked potato strata. So, you know, I, I invented this for when I, well, not, you know, remember back in the day when we used to like see people in person and have gatherings? That's why, you know, I used to buy that big thing, you know, like how Costco, it's like even bigger, like it's like the biggest, like, buffet tray and I you know like because I used to have a pre-thanksgiving dinner with like 40 people and that, I, that's what I would make and um, it feeds a lot of people it's very inexpensive and it's it's fairly easy to make and if somebody didn't want to make the barbecue sauce they could use any recipe or just buy commercial but it's you know it's basically you just mash some potatoes you know yeah yeah it's, so it's baking so easy. barbecue sauce into it it's it's so good because I never really cared much for ketchup or mustard, you know, a lot of people did it. And even when I ate, ate real French fries back in the day, I, I dipped everything in barbecue sauce. It's just the best condiment. Yeah, it was a new sauce to me. You know, I didn't grow up in this country. And um, it's, I think it's, you know, particular to America. Um, so I grew up with, we called it tomato sauce, which was a you call tomato ketchup. But, you know, we didn't have it like Americans have ketchup. And I was never a tomato sauce person or ketchup person. But I love this barbecue sauce. I think it's the smokiness that gets me. So all I did was I have the mashed potato. I have a layer of the barbecue sauce on top of that. And then I'm just going to layer on the um, sweet potato on top of this. And then put the barbecue sauce on top of that. Wow, I'm going to have potatoes for days here. Um, not complaining at all. But I'll just spread that all around. And... I did, um, and then this will go into the oven and it just bakes uncovered for about an hour. Um, and then when, I, when it comes out of the oven, I put on, I, I don't know what you do on top, Chef AJ, but I like to chop up some fresh parsley or snip on some- um, Scallions, scallions. Scallions, I have, I have some um, chives. So I like to just, grab some chives and then, you know, snip some of the chives on top as well. And that looks really pretty. So this is the one that I've been, I made yes or two days ago. Right? So anyway, so this one, I would just put the barbecue sauce on top. Let me finish off this and then I'll get this in the oven. And if you have any barbecue sauce left over, um, and what I love about this recipe is like the barbecue sauce has got the, all that lycopene with the, um, the tomatoes. I mean, there's just so much goodness in this recipe. It's just, everything is good about this recipe. So this is gonna go in the oven and I'll pop that in there. And I'll show you what this looks like when it's cooked. So I made some a couple of days ago and this one is, um, oh, yesterday I think it was. So this one, I had some of the purple sweet potatoes that I just had to use up. So I'm just gonna cut a slice of it here and show you how beautiful it looks so this one i have three layers on so you know like chef aj says just use what you have and um 
that's how it is. You know, I bet I bet you could freeze it even before baking it and then just bake the whole thing. Yeah. So there I have the finished um, dish here. So this has got this, the three layers of sweet potatoes. So the one I put in the oven only has the, um, you know, the one, I mean, the two sweet potatoes, but that's how it can look. Um, and that with some broccoli, steamed broccoli next to it. In fact, I, I'll take a picture of my breakfast today, which was a steamed broccoli with um, a whole big slice of this. But it's really beautiful. I mean, it's such a eye-catching dish. You know, you've got the contrast of the two um, potatoes and this barbecue sauce is absolutely delicious. So that's it for the baked um, potato, mashed potato strata. I'm gonna clear the set and we're gonna move on to one more recipe from Chef AJ's book. That looks amazing, you're making me hungry. It looks so good. I think it almost looks like a cake or something like that, like a savory, beautiful cake to serve. So I feel like that would be another beautiful um, centerpiece for a holiday, holiday meal as well. And I, I will have to say, I do love barbecue sauce, but I do love ketchup as well. And so I can't say it's the, the best condiment. I think it's, it's a rival with ketchup for me, but they're, it, they're both so good. Um, and it's fun that we can make them without having the added salt and oil and sugar and all of that. Um, before, when I was a little kid, whenever we'd go out to eat, which was not very often, but I would just drench whatever I was eating in all of the sauces. Um, and I love when you go vegan and you learn how to make your own sauces, it's so empowering. Um, can, I so, just, can I just interrupt one more time, Keely? Of course. Sorry, I just wanted to say, um, speaking of sauces, so if you do have any extra, for this one, I had such a big uh, platter that I didn't have extra, but if you do have extra, just store it in a jar like this. And anytime you, you know, go to the fridge and you want some barbecue sauce, you have some already made. So that's, that's how I store it. Back to you, Kelly. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, you can never have enough sauce, in my opinion, um, especially over your salads or any of your veggie dishes. So we want to share with you guys, we have a super exciting announcement for the holidays. Um, as many of you know, we've hosted over five uh, online vegan cooking series in the past in the past six months, and we decided to put them together into a sort of holiday bundle for you all. Um, so we were calling it Green Friday because we know there's Black Friday, but because we're all about things that are good for the planet, we wanted to call it Green Friday, and we're offering over 25 percent. Um, over 25% off our vegan cooking series. And so if you just go to veganisdaily.com slash store, you can click on which class, either one class or two packs of two classes or a three pack of three classes. Um, there's different combinations of our vegan cooking series and you can easily just select it, purchase it, and then you'll get an email with a download that has all of the links to our online um, cooking classes. In, in each series, we have over three cooking classes. We have 33 recipes per cooking series that are all vegan, salt, oil, sugar free and gluten free. And then you also get detailed shopping lists and you get daily support in our private Facebook group that I mentioned. And so it's a really wonderful community and you can either get this for yourself for a gift for the holidays or for somebody that you love. Um, so our most recent cooking series was actually called Pardon My Turkey. Some of you might have heard about it or taken the series. Um, and if you're interested in this, we're also, this is also part of the Green Friday sale. So if you want to take any of these series, again, you just go to veganisdaily.com slash store and you can check them out. So here are some of the recipes. We had um, two different dips called I Swear It's Not Crab Dip, a delicious spinach artichoke dip. We had a few different soups that were really delicious. And we also had um, French recipes, things like quiche with a pumpkin crust. We had pumpkin waffles gratitude bowl and so many other recipes um, in the book. There's over 37 recipes. You can check them out here and also the, the detailed shopping list that comes with it. So all of our series come with the recipe book, the detailed shopping list and the full length recordings. Um, so here are some of the other series. We had a series where we did Mediterranean, Asian, and American recipes. We had one where we did Thai, Indian, and French. We had one that was based on party, potluck, and picnic food. And then we also had um, a series where we did Mexican food and American food um, and Italian food. So we have all different kinds of cuisine from all around the world. So this year we've been traveling to different countries um, through our kitchens and through the power of the internet, which has been really wonderful. So here are some more delicious recipes of ours. And 
again, everything that's included. And if you do sign up for any of these series, you also get 18 bonus salad recipes that includes three different delicious dressings. So um, these 18 salad recipes are included with your purchase of any of these series. Um, and these are very elegant and they're also a nice balance to sort of the heavier holiday food that people tend to eat around this time of year. Not saying you guys because you follow Chef AJ, so you clearly are eating pretty clean, but these salads are a really nice complement to sort of the potato dishes as well. So again, veganisdaily.com slash store. And I'm going to turn it back to my mom and we are going to make the delicious apple dish. And mom, are you ready? I'm ready. Yes. Okay, so this is a warm baked apples and who doesn't love warm baked apples? But this recipe, which is from Chef, Chef AJ and Glenn Mercer's book, Own Your Health, comes with warm baked apples with a date shake sauce. It couldn't be any simpler. And, and in fact, I'm definitely gonna be cooking my way through all of the recipes in your book, Chef AJ. I just, um, I'm really excited about cooking a lot of them. Um, and I love the ones from your contributors as well. So that's exciting. Oh, why am I not a contributor? Why did I not think of you? Oh my God, I feel terrible now. Hey, next book. <laughs> Wait, the, next the next book's all desserts. Maybe. I, mean, <laughs> I never thought about having contributors for that. But you know, uh, you guys, um, Elspeth is going to be uh, one of the eight chefs on the live Christmas show. Those of you that joined for the Thanksgiving show, we had one of our biggest numbers ever. And so many people sent their photos of what they made, like Liliana cooking along with us. It was amazing. And so Elspeth was the last chef on the Thanksgiving show. She made her chocolate pecan pies, but she is going to be doing the entree on the Christmas show. And, and I'll let her tell you about it. It's going to be amazing. So make sure you sign up to be on my mailing list because otherwise you won't get the shopping list and you won't get the... Uh, the ingredient list and we have uh, five of the seven chefs that, that did demonstrations live on Thanksgiving Day are coming back two are not available and so we added three new chefs it's going to be amazing uh, I can't wait for it it's really fun it's a nice way to build community I mean we're all at home and um, it just you know some people are home alone so I think it's just a really wonderful thing that you're doing Chef AJ and I'm so honored to be part of it and I am very excited about the dish that I'm going to be making it was like I'm making this dish for Charles and Chef AJ. I have all these requirements, you know, obviously it's gonna be whole food plant-based, sugar salt, oil free, but it also had to be quinoa free because of Charles. It had to be legume free because of Chef AJ and um, gluten free because that's how we kind of eat. So anyway, so it's gonna be fabulous. I'm making a roasted um, a, a chestnut and um, what did I call it? Chestnut and mushroom roast. And it's gonna be like a big wreath. It's gonna, it's gonna be beautiful. You, you're gonna absolutely want want this recipe so definitely tune in for that but um right here recipe, you know I, I mean you sent me a picture and it looked amazing yeah yeah it was really fun creating and it was like oh and then I was like I needed to put a big bow on it so I was slicing zucchini skins and making bows out of zucchini skins I can't help playing with my food I love to make everything look really pretty um so anyway so these baked apples you know are super easy so all I'm doing is I'm using an apple corer and I'm taking out the core of the apple. You can use whatever apples you like. Um, I'm just, because I think it looks pretty, I'm using some, um, these are little um, Envy apples and Granny Smith apples. Um, but sometimes I've, I've made this with Gala apples as well. So anyway, apples of your choice. So I just take out the core, pop the core into my compost and um, Raisins. So if you're using raisins, definitely get organic raisins because they use a lot of pesticides on grapes and stuff. So you want to stuff the raisins inside the, the core of the apple here. And then I'm going to make a date shake sauce, which I'm going to pour over this and pop it in the oven to bake until these are nice and soft. So you can use, um, the recipe actually calls for a fair bit of grapes. I mean, not grapes, <laughs> raisins. Um, you can sprinkle some on the side, you can stuff some in, but this is what's gonna give these apples a nice sweetness. And I've had these apples for breakfast, I've had them for snacks, I've had them for dessert, I've had them for lunch. So um, really fun way to, to have these apples, especially at this time of year, very seasonal. But it looks very pretty um, if you're making you know, a holiday, holiday dessert or holiday breakfast. Um, so for the date shake sauce, I'm going to use some almond milk. Again, there is a video on our YouTube channel. I'd love it if you all went over and subscribed to our YouTube channel. Vegan News Daily is the name of the YouTube channel. And we've got lots of 
fun, beautiful recipes. So please join us there. Um, I have some dates. This is a date shake after all. So three medjool dates that have taken the pit out of. And then um, frozen bananas. So two, two frozen bananas. So I use the bananas that are nice and black and speckled like this. Not these green ones that you find in the airport. Yes, they look pretty, but they are not very digestible and they're definitely not sweet. So when the, 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 the bananas are black and speckled, I put them in the freezer in my Ziploc bags and I freeze them for when I want to make something like this. So the other ingredients for the, the sauce are vanilla. Um, Chef AJ is big on vanilla powder. I just have some vanilla paste here and some cinnamon. So this is just a little cinnamon. And you could use nutmeg or um, I'm gonna use cardamom because I am a big fan of cardamom. Mm, I love cardamom. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I absolutely love it. So I'm just gonna blend this all up, have some more blender noise, I know, and then pour this over these apples and get them in the oven to bake. Okay, so with this date shake sauce, I'm going to pour some of it over the top of the apples here, and I'm going to fill the apples just sort of about three quarters of the way up. And then I'm going to you can see the sauce in the base here. Um, and then I'm going to cover this whole dish up with um, silver foil and get this into the oven. Pop that in here. I do have some that I've already I really thank you for making that recipe because my goal is to get all the contributors making their recipes and the lady that contributed just doesn't want to come on. So thank you for doing Zell Allen's recipe. Oh, that's great. I, I am happy to do any of these recipes. They right up my alley. So, um, and then I have a little bit of the, the date shake sauce left over. So I'm going to pour some of these into these little um, ice cream molds that I'll be able to pop into the freezer and make some nicely portioned ice creams. You do those, Chef AJ, don't you? I do that with everything. I did it with my holiday nog. I taught a class yesterday and I made holiday nog and I, you know, there was just nobody to drink it. And that's why I make popsicles. That's what I do. It's great. It's such a great thing. Oh, and Chef AJ, I heard you talking about how you have 10,000 of these uh, popsicle sticks. I have 5,000. It was cheaper to buy 5,000 on Amazon than to buy 50 or 100. Go figure. So I'll be making popsicles until my death, dying day. Um, I'd, be, I'd be happy for you to send some over because I'm, I'm down to the bottom of mine. You know so. what? You know I will. So I just, yeah. work myself. I mean, I, mean I, am, I am so happy to do that after all you've done for me. And what she's done for me is she has improved my appearance because any, I'm wearing a shirt today because there's a reason. But she, all the nice shirts that you see, they're on Elspeth. And she has my dresser now. She is my personal stylist. Well, actually, truth be told, Chef AJ's told me that I am her pusher because now she's addicted to buying new clothes. And um, I know, and, and I said I wasn't going to do it. I had gotten rid. Of, well, I didn't get rid of. So, so many people give me T-shirts, which I appreciate. And uh, but I'm not a. Re I mean, I'm wearing a T-shirt today. There's a reason. I'm doing something later that requires me to have this on. But I'm not a big T-shirt lover, and, and there's a few I like if they have to be really soft and fit correctly. And I didn't want to give them away because they were gifts. And so there's this company that makes like these really soft blanket quilts on a T-shirt. So I took the 24 T-shirts and um, it's being made into a, like a really nice soft blanket for me. And uh, now you, you're pretty much giving me 24 shirts to replace them, so. <laughs> Well, we appreciate it. And I love all the hand-me-downs that you're sending our way. It's really fun. I, okay. I grew up wearing hand-me-downs for my sister. So it's so, so much fun. To, I love hand-me-downs. The so. funny thing is the hand-me-downs I sent you, everything, every dress was, see, because I just, with this pandemic, I learned I can just be so much happier doing everything virtually. So everything I sent the mother and Kaylee and Elspeth, mother and daughter, 
literally worn one time because every conference I did 19 conferences and so I had 19 dresses. I think I didn't send you all my few that you said that were not your thing. But yes, the company is Boston Proper. That's where most of the shirts came from. And Venus is where a couple of them came from. And they have the bra shelf. I love having a bra shelf. That is my favorite thing about, about clothes. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really fun and comfortable. Yeah. This is a Boston Proper one. It's really fun. And I think we both have this one in pink too. So yeah, it looks um, amazing on you. And, and, you know, people love your accent, especially the way you say tomato and banana. <laughs> yeah, I think there's certain words, you know, I've lived here um, 32 years or 31 years, and there's certain words that I just, I guess, are always going to stay the same. But my family, who all live in France now, um, they all think that I sound very American. So I don't know. But um, I do have some apples in the oven that I did bake. So I'm going to take them out and show you how they look when I plate them up. So let me grab those. So these ones I baked in advance. Whoa, a little bit hot. Okay. So um, you can see what when they bake, they do. They don't look as vibrant and pretty as when they're not baked, but they're they smell so amazing. So I'm gonna just take. They're a, delicious and they're low in fat and they, I mean they're really. I mean it's it's decadent, but yet it's it's really it's so great, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Here's, here's a, I don't think else, Gina, I don't think Elspeth would mind. She's not going to be like that guest that got so upset at me when I asked if they were married. How did you and your husband meet? Oh, that's such a good story. Thanks Gina for asking. No, I would not be upset about that. Um, my husband and I, um, we have been married 30 years this, this summer was 30 years. We celebrated our 30 year anniversary and, um, you know, talk about planets colliding. It could have, I don't know how th this planets were aligned, but I was basically a, um, I was 21 at the time. I was backpacking around the world, working my way around the world, as many people from Zimbabwe and South Africa do. So I was working in London for a summer to save money to go hitchhiking around Europe. And my husband was, um, at, um, you know, grew up in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia. And at the time he was at Harvard Business School of all places. And it was between first and second year um, and it was in the summertime. And so he was working for American Express Bank in London. And he had a good friend there who was British. And that guy happened to be dating the roommate that I was living with in London, who was also from Zimbabwe. And so the first night he arrived in London, you know, everyone said, well, you know, let's go, let's go up. Um, so I met him on a street corner in Piccadilly. We went to the movies together. And I, you know, he was, um, he was so far from what I thought I would end up with. I thought I was going to marry a Zimbabwean farmer and a you know, be a farmer's wife and have six babies. And I end up with this American businessman and um, it's just amazing. So we, we were, we dated that, you know, first summer. Um, well, we actually, we were just friends in London. And then I was going to uh, Greece with a whole bunch of friends. And I said to him at the end of, you know, the, the summer, I said, you're welcome to come to Greece and join us. And um, so he showed up in Greece about a week after I got there. And um, suddenly it was island fever, you know, and, um, we started dating and then I would, I continued backpacking around Europe with a girlfriend and he went back to business school. And then by the time I got back to London, I was penniless and um, he called from Boston and said, why don't you come over to Boston and sent me a ticket. And I came to the States for the very first time. Um, and I, it was, it was October. So it was really a beautiful time of year. Um, and then I, I had a round the world ticket at that stage. So I went on to Australia I was living in Australia for about six months. He came out there for Christmas. And so he kept following me. I have to tell the story because if he told the story first, he would say that I followed him around the world. But the truth is he followed me. So I was in Australia and he came to Australia for 10 days over Christmas and New Year. He had to go back to school. And then after he graduated, I was back in Zimbabwe and he came out to Zimbabwe. We traveled Zimbabwe and South Africa for two months. And he had a one-way ticket for me back to the States. So I came back to the States with him and the rest, as you say, is history. That's so romantic. You guys are such a wonderful and good looking couple and you produce beautiful offspring and you're vegan. I mean, God, what could be better? Oh, yeah. Well, we, um, we're, we're definitely lucky. We have two amazing kids and um, we have a great marriage and uh, we're plant based and my husband's a great athlete. He's uh, super strong, fit and healthy. And I really appreciate the fact that he likes my cooking and, and lets me experiment on him constantly. <laughs> That's nice. I love experimenting on husbands. Isn't that the best? Do you ever experiment on your husband, Kaylee? 
Oh, absolutely. All the time. He was, he was for a while, he was doing like a raw food phase with me, but I, I we found a good balance for him. I cook, I cook him dinner every night as well. So I love making him all the recipes. As my mom said, it's super fun to have um, all these recipe books so that we can finally flip through because her and I always thought we didn't like recipes and we've proved ourselves wrong. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so it's been wonderful. And it's really fun when we all get together as a family to cook together. And my mom and I just like, love being together in the kitchen um in fact my mom found um she got all of our childhood videos moved on to eye memories and she found a video of us in the kitchen from i think 2004 um, of us on thanksgiving in the kitchen and we're like cooking together and i did not have a huge interest in food but on holidays i was her sous chef and it was just a hilarious video to watch us um, in the kitchen it was our first cooking show we said <laughs> That's great. Well, you guys are certainly the dynamic duo. And, and Elspeth, Gina says, any man would follow you around the world. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Gina. That's so sweet. Well, I'm, I, as I say, I'm really lucky to have a husband who loves, loves food, loves to exercise, needs lots of food. So the relationship works well because this is definitely my icky guy being in the kitchen, doing exactly what I do. And I really hope that, you know, some of you sign up for some of our classes. I'm not sure exactly when the next one's going to be in, in uh, 2021, but it will be happening. And um, we love doing what we do and, and hope that you guys uh, can come join us. We'd love to host you. Well, you guys do it so well and with a touch of grace and class. Oh, thank you, Chef AJ. <laughs> and, and thank you so much, Kelly. And, 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 and uh, Kaylee, you, 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 you always have the makeup and the jewelry. Just, you know, you, you should come on the team and help advise me a little bit because you. You, you guys got it going on. If I get you into the jewelry, though, that will be a bigger problem. Your yeah, husband. No, don't, 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 no, never mind. Forget it. No, cancel, cancel. <laughs> but, but you just, all you guys are, look, always look amazing. So thanks. The food looks amazing. Thank you so much for this presentation. And guys, subscribe to that link above so you get the recipes for Christmas because Elspeth is doing the entree and you will not want to miss it. Uh, Kelly says, can you use cranberries instead of raisins for apples? Sure. Why not? What's her site? Pam, you're watching on Facebook. Guys, Facebook guys, watch on YouTube. Everything's on YouTube. Always there in the show notes. Facebook just not as good. So I thanks again. The link one more time if you want real quick. On yeah, this absolutely. Oh. And it's in the show notes too. And, and uh, Kaylee will put it right now in the, maybe in the chat box. So if you want the Green Friday special, you go to veganisdaily.com slash store for all of the vegan cooking series. And if you want to request the cauliflower recipe, the whole roasted cauliflower with tahini, just go to veganisdaily.com slash recipes. And the latest that we'll email you guys is tomorrow morning in case we get a ton of requests, but um, we will get this out to you because we know you're probably pretty hungry. And if you want to subscribe to the YouTube channel, it's Vegan News Daily. And you can follow us on Instagram. My mom is at the Speedy Vegan. I'm Give Joy a Chance. And together we're vegan news daily so thank you guys so much thank you chef aj you are the best oh thank you and thank you elspeth i so enjoy watching you cook and i have taken one of their classes and they are amazing and their support is amazing as are their recipes and thanks all of you for watching another episode of chef aj live i've been posting the link to be on my mailing list consider clicking that because then you know all the schedule in advance and we have at least five more cooking demos this week. But tomorrow, my guest at 11 a.m. Pacific time is Dr. John Tanner. And he actually died, literally. His heart stopped while running. He had a cardiac arrest. And now his whole life is about educating people on a plant-based diet, which is how he recovered. So hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks again, Vegan News Daily. Bye. Thanks, Chip AJ. Bye.